Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in to check out this video. This is the removal of a yellow jacket's nest inside the attic of an old 1700s house from a customer over in Westchester, Pennsylvania. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button down below and hit the bell notification if you want to get updates on future videos that I have coming up in the near future. There's a yellow jacket's nest removal from inside of a customer's house, plus my chickens and the squirrely squirrel. Here's the video. Check it out. All right, guys, we're just going to get right into this removal. So upon investigation, um, these yellow jackets were coming in and out from underneath of a window outside. And uh, so the customer had called me when they were super active. And uh, by the time I got here, it was pretty cold. So I wasn't seeing the in and out, in and out that they were talking about. Um, so just with my experience when I'm doing any kind of like in-house, indwelling removal is to uh, use my ears. So I listened to the walls. I listened to the floor. I listened to the ceiling. Um, so I actually laid down on this floor and I put my ear on the, on the uh, on these awesome looking attic floorboards, and uh, I could hear the the very um, distinct rustling sound that I hear when I when I uh, hear these nests, and it literally sounds like um, someone taking like a plastic Walmart bag and just rustling it, and their hands really tight uh, between their hands. So that's the sound that I heard, and um, when I drilled the first hole, I went right down into the nest. So before you guys ask, yes, it is a shame to cut into this uh, this very historic house um, and cut into original woodwork. However, the customer was more concerned about getting the wasps out of their house than they were about um, you know having to repair um, original floorboards. So these are actually up in an attic, so it's not like that they're in like a um, finished, very finished part of the house um, in the sense that it's uh, you know going to be seen every day and that sort of thing. This is kind of like they were going to be converting this into what looks like to an office space. Um, so what I cut out is very uninvasive and it will be easy to repair. So I um, so I just cut a couple uh, perpendicular lines to the floorboards and then cut along the uh, the tongue of the, uh, the one floorboard and exposed this really cool looking nest. So this particular species is one that um, actually makes their nest out of rotting wood material so it's not like when they chew on like fence posts or um, you know like um, actual treated boards and things where the nests are really strong like bald-faced hornets or German yellow jackets these guys actually chew on um, rotting wood material and they make their paper out of that so their nest envelope and comb is really really brittle and when you touch it with your fingers it basically just like falls apart in your fingers um, so I'll be showing that in an upcoming video just comparing the different kinds of nests between species but uh, not in this video. Um, so I did have to cut out two boards to get into this nest just because of how big it was. There was really no way to get it out in, in one piece um, or at least get it out significantly without feeling like I was leaving something behind. So I did cut out uh, two boards um, and actually not one whole board. It's actually, you can see there that it's um, actually had split naturally on its own and I just kind of cut it to the split. So um, there were a lot still in this nest. This nest was still very active, and it did get cold sooner than um, than when these all all of these uh, wasps, new queens and males, were releasing. So there was still a significant amount of adults inside the nest, um, and a lot of larvae too. A lot of larvae and a lot of unhatched comb or unhatched cells. So pulling out this monster. It was a good sized nest for the species. This species usually makes about a nest about the size of, um, I don't know, uh, just a normal pancake and maybe about three or four layers high. So this one was significantly wider. All those comb cells that you see there are all queen cells, except for like right in the center. Um, and you can see all the envelope that they laid. They, they got so busy because the, the, the comb was done being... Uh, being built so they started just barreling at putting down envelope you can see there's quite a bit of envelope in here there's a lot of males trotting around I do show the difference between a queen a male and a female worker um, a little bit later on in the video please don't skip ahead um, I want you guys to see all these cool um, aspects to this nest and how they built in here I love getting these shots onto the floor because unfortunately I can't see it I really can't see very well in my veil anyway but I especially can't see, obviously, underneath the floorboards. So I just need to be able to put the camera down there and, and kind of pan around and see the up underneath the floorboards, which no one has seen in there probably since the you know mid-1700s when they put the, uh, the ceiling on down in the, in the room below. So you still see there's some silk caps. So there's not all the workers have been hatched yet. Not all the queens and males have been hatched yet. 
just wild to think about because there were a lot in this nest already as you saw previously in the beginning of the video and you see all those little support structures all these little vertical bits that's what holds the comb separate from each other so that way they can crawl in between and that's usually the stuff that's, that I have to pry them apart with my crowbar I have to pry those pieces apart so just breaking up a bit of the envelope now you can see there's a lot of uh, males there's a lot of males and queens in here pretty much all those are queens and males and there's not very many workers in there most of the workers had already flown out so for you vacuum junkies here you go here's your vacuum scene <laughs> this is even pleasurable for me to watch I'd like seeing uh, something get sucked up and cleaned up really good So you see it just kind of breaks apart, like it doesn't like stay in like full sheets like bald faced hornet nest envelope goes. And I'm able to see here that there was a little bit more envelope in there, and obviously some workers still in there. And you see all of them down the way, you can see there's like a lines of them, almost like an ant trail. They were just crawling all the way through the between those rafters and in that that uh flooring space. Look at all of them. So they will eventually either leave the nest and die because it's cold outside, or I did spray up in there just to kill as many as I could. Um, they weren't really going to pose much of a threat to the homeowner, because as you can see, most of them were males, which males can't sting. Um, queens can sting, but, I mean, not unless they're provoked. Um, workers, on the other hand, they will, they will attack if they feel, um, you know, if they see somebody up r running around and feel the vibration of footsteps and things. I did open the window because I figured if they're going to fly outside, they're going to die from the cold anyway. Uh, so it was really cold this day. It was like 31 degrees. But they could have very well stayed alive inside that floorboard um, for probably all winter and then start up again next year and just keep building right off that nest. Because that could have definitely been a super nest by next year. So just to patch the flooring, just to keep it so that the wasp can't come through until they get a repair done, and just duct tape the, the uh, cracks shut. It's really not a structural repair, it's more just to kind of seal it up until, uh, until the, all the workers and things die. So I did leave this out overnight, so that way it would, it would slow down the adults. And uh, they are, as you can see. Okay. So this is a new queen. This is a male. Look how long his antennas are compared to hers. Stay put. Look how more robust she is. She's got a larger abdomen. It's thicker. Darker orange. He has more wide black stripes consecutively. And then this is a just a regular worker, female. See, she's pretty, pretty well smaller than him. She's got shorter antenna. He's got a lot longer antenna that kind of hook. And then the queen has similar antenna to the male, but they're not nearly as long in relative to her body. So that's the difference in sexing the three different the three different types of wasps and the demographics in the colony. See, her abdomen is a lot more robust and thick compared to his. His is long and slender. It's got an extra abdominal segment. And he has an extra antenna segment. So that's the difference. All right, let's feed him with the chickens. Thank <laughs> you. 
Goody's Goo. Squirrely squirrel. Oh, you're taking it away? Ha ha ho ho hee hee.
All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in to check out this video. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop in the comments, let me know what you think. If you have suggestions for future videos, just drop in the comments as well, let me know. If you guys haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so and hit that bell notification down below so that way you guys can get updates of any future videos I have coming up. Otherwise, if you guys are continuous subscribers, thanks so much for tuning in to check out my videos and supporting my channel, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.